thinking now I should record. All right, so now you'll be prompted to continue to stay on the call even though you're being recorded. And if you choose to stay on the call, you will be recorded. As uh, seems obvious. Are you, all right, there we go. So yeah, last week I um, was moving the power. I was moving, I was just power cycling my fiber optic modem and uh, I didn't realize the electrical cord was like locked into the back of it. So I ripped it out and I'm working from my office at work and the internet's pretty sketchy. So, but better than what I get on my phone at home. Um, all right, so on the agenda today, we have individual and organizational contribution credits. Um, I knew this to do that I had been postponing would be, would, would come back to haunt me. Um, so I think we were ready the last time to actually finalize individual and organizational credits and get it ready to be under review. Does anyone agree, disagree? We call differently. All right. I'm going to assume that's a heck yeah. Oh, just a second. What was the, what was the question? Oh, um, the question was, do you, my recollection from last time is that we were pretty close to being ready to go with um, this metric that I'm going to open up here after I share my screen. Organizational contribution credits. So contribution credit. And I thought we could just get to work on this today and if we read through it again. Oh yeah, yeah, this one is really close. Mm -hmm. if we just read through it again. Quick question. Uh, yeah. How this is different from organization impact? Significantly. I would have to look at organizational impact, but my recollection is that that metric is focused on the organization, not the contributor for one. Okay. Yeah, because impact is after the fact effects. It's not at the time of service being provided credits. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah, that makes sense to me that this is less about what was the result of all of that work and more like who did the work, who sponsored the work. And we're not limited to organizations here. Yes. Either. Uh, the, no, in fact, it's the credit can also be individuals yeah. and yeah. It, yeah. or start starts with individuals and then and then points to who those individuals are affiliated with. Working for. Yeah. I got to choose. I got confused when I read the question, like people and organization, then I was trying to differentiate, like how are they different from the organization that we have? Okay, that's clear now. And I think the ability, I like the ability to grant multiple credits as well. Yep. Maybe this is me. It seems, seems pretty likely this is gonna just be me, but that the word credit is a little bit confusing for me. I, hmm. I wonder if we should do contribution attribution or if that's not good either. Maybe maybe credit's fine. You know what? It's uh, fine. Credit is an overloaded word. It's it's a word that is used in a lot of different ways in society. So, in one of our previous hmm. uh, definitions, we did have attribution, uh, and I'm I'm perfectly comfortable with attribution. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. Attribution feels more like your uh giving some work like uh, regards to the work that person is doing or organizing right? um yeah i would add that we we actually use that word in the drupal community as well attribution 
Uh, yeah, the word. So we have this GitLab issue where we're trying to get this into GitLab. Oh. I pasted it in the chat, and I mean, the title of that issue is attributing contribution to recognize individual versus organization contributions. So perfect. That that yeah. totally works with how we we sort of informally go back and forth between those words so i i kind of like the idea of just oh we actually use the word attribution in the question already too yeah <clears throat> Um, who is working on the project? I, I so good point, Elizabeth. It's not just you; it's everybody. <laughs> all the all the stars aligned around that idea. I feel so validated now. Thank you. It's the right idea. <laughs> I was sitting here wondering if attribution was too fancy of a word, but we're already using it, so that solves that. So. Uh... There's like contribution, attribution, uh, or just attribution, like title. Hmm. Well, I mean, reads weird. Something, something is missing. Or I, I it sounds know. like something Jesse Jackson would say. Yeah. Contribution, attribution. <laughs> to stop pollution. Yeah. Um, it's got a lot of alliterative elements to it, but I think it's probably right. Yeah, I, I like it. I think the the main area that we need to work on right now is the description. Yeah. Uh, Did anyone work on this metric who is not present currently? Go back and look at our last few meetings. I think Armstrong's been here for some of it. Yeah, I think that's right. Armstrong was here. Oh, I'm trying to remember how to found <clears throat> found. How do you spell his name? Found Jim? F O U M. Yeah, found Jim. J E M. J. Oh, E M, not A M. Okay. J. Okay. Yeah, it's literally found Jim. Oh, those are lists, or those are bullets, aren't they? Am I missing anyone for contributors? Not in that section, as you can see. But... That looks good to me, Kevin. So as since this, uh, this, this, I think I would actually like maybe a little more connection to, uh, uh, to Drupal in this, right? Since we're basing this on, on that work. Is there a way we can yeah, provide us? Totally is right. there a way we can provide a little bit of more contribution attribution? Yes. Uh, so in the reference, we can write this, uh, the link which uh, Matthew just provided of the GitLab contribution attribution to recognize individuals. 
we can point to that as a reference. Yeah, in the I think in that last section, I had added a few links in terms of yeah. things that were specific to the Drupal community. Uh, tools providing the metric. All right. I think we could add it in tools providing the metric as well. We don't have any other than the Drupal tool, I guess we could refer to. Yeah. Is that, uh, and I, I, and I'm, I'm sorry, I forget. Is that page, uh, is that page completely open? Could we provide a link in the tools providing the metric? Matthew, I think that's for you. Is, uh, is which particular page you mean like he wants to link to the tool or to some some info about the tool that Drupal uses. The dashboard, maybe. Right. Yeah, let me see if there's a good over. I think we have, I mean, we have a number of overview pages. Um, another thing that might be relevant. Um, OK, well, let me, let me see if I can first answer your question. And, and then I was going to bring up something else that I just remembered that happened this last week. Um, so okay so I'll, I'll just say you know we had there was like this was the blog post that announced this issue um mm. that is somewhat out to out of date now but not necessarily i mean think things have changed since we've added this so i mean we could if we made it more of like a historical thing like the drupal community added this in you know 2016 or something like that it was 2015 actually but this blog post describes it then okay. um that would be one and, way to do it and the, the primary tool is a is a dashboard well that's i mean it's it's cool. used in a lot of ways so it's like it's listed on all of people's um uh personal profiles as well and um, okay. I'll just, we'll just say the Drupal community added this tool in 20. Yeah, what, let's say 2015. I mean, we started, we started measuring in July, 2015. Okay. And we then started... we'll provide a link <clears throat> to that, <throat> uh, blog. Yeah. Post. Is the is that image in visual visualizations? Is that from uh, the Drupal dashboard as well? The the one that we have in this document, I think that I added. Are you um, the? Yes. Yeah. So that one the, in visualizations, I see what you're saying is from that um, that it's from the third link down, I think in the references, the who sponsors Drupal development 2020 edition. Okay. So there's a whole bunch of, yeah. I mean, uh, essentially that th those year, those annual blog posts describing the metric are the main places where a lot of this stuff is used currently. Okay. Is there another visualization that we could add to kind of give a, so we, we'd use this one, but we'd also have just a kind of a different flavor. Sure. Yeah, I'm. I, I mean, I don't know if and how many of those speak to like. Hmm. Which ones might be most specific?
I mean, and I'll post one in the chat, I guess, is one way I could do it. There's, there's another, that that would be one that sort of so, shows a different use, different visualization. Which, uh, which reference down here points to that blog you were referring to? The third, the third. The third one? Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, there's also visualizations on the, the first one as well. I was just, I was linking, I wanted to link to that blog in the tools providing the metrics section. Sure. I mean, we could also show the, well, I mean, like what, there's this one that, uh, that breaks it down by gender. And I mean, it's sort of, it, it might be interesting to highlight the fact that you could see like more female work mm. is sponsored than male work or something like that. Yeah, I think that would be, that would That's be great. That's interesting. So, how about type of contributor that will be? Yeah, yeah. I mean, type is another one that's that's interesting because I mean, you can you can sort of get that in different ways with existing tools, but gives you a more like maybe more depth i guess oh it's weird Okay. I'm accepting other people's changes, but trying not to accept my own. I've been so, accepting yours. Okay. Uh, so in implementation, you have the you have the human in the loop uh, uh, statement. Yeah, so I'm trying to get to the point where it, because for there to be attribution in the way that we've talked about, there has to be a person that's doing the work of assigning or making those attributions. I think at now least for, for the merge request type things. I forget, but doesn't Drupal, <clears throat> doesn't Drupal specifically <coughs> ask these questions in some sort of form? They do. And that's so the, so what I'm so the, the human isn't necessarily uh, making these determinations from uh, from assessing the credit. The, it's being, it, it's more being provided. No, it's, it's, I think there's, there were examples that Matthew provided where there were people who had made a commit or something on a pull request, but those they were not given credit. Like whatever that commit was, wasn't didn't rate rise to the level of credit. Like maybe they merged a previous merge request or something. Yeah. To which for which you get a credit of a commit, but that's not really a contribution. For example. So there, I think I think maybe usually if anybody contributes code or reviews code, they would they would be be attributed. There yeah. are cases where somebody would might make a comment on an issue and give like an in-depth analysis of the, like the architecture or something. And, and I think the, the difference would be that person could assign credit or attribution to their employer 
Whereas somebody else just might come by and say plus one to this idea. They would also have the option of saying, you know, I did this work on, on behalf of my employer, but they might not have contributed anything of substance. So they plus might. Plus one's not a contribution. Well, yeah, it could not. be. I mean, it could be. I mean, it, it, that is, that is precisely like that kind of thing is plus one, a contribution would be decided by that human being. Right. Yeah. I was going to agree with you, but uh, if it's not a contribution, I'm going to withhold it. <laughs> <laughs> that's very well done, Kevin. That was, uh, you, you teed that up perfectly. Um, okay, we've worked on this for 10 minutes. Um, do you want, I mean, I think we're pretty close here, though. The only thing... Um, we have tools providing the metric Drupal basically is the one right now. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if this is relevant, but we're, tr we're trying to keep this moving forward at GitLab. Um, I, I just found out, yeah. they haven't published this yet, but um, I got a talk accepted at GitLab commit. Um, t Tim and I are, are from the Drupal Association are going to talk about this <laughs> and promote it at their next conference. So. Hopefully that's an indication that we'll keep moving that forward. But in other words, it's a little bit more than just an issue, but like we're moving towards trying to get other platforms to adopt it, but we're not there yet. But the furthest one along is GitLab. I think maybe a link. I just made a note tools providing there's an issue open with GitLab to implement this functionality. I think that probably that would be useful to have that issue linked here because then if somebody like as that issue progresses, we'll be able to see how it's resolved and yeah, um, people might be actually able to use the GitLab, GitLab functionality once that is resolved through implementation. I think it's under references, right? It is. Oh, it is. Okay. We could link oh, to yeah. it. No, I just put it up. Yeah, leave it under references. I can just put it up here. Uh, currently, I can't. Oh, there we are. I tweaked the implementation section a little bit. Can you take a peek, to Which where where is that? Oh, there we go. Are you good with the human in the loop stuff, Kevin? Or I am. I just uh, I didn't want to lead with it, and I thought it needed a bit of a, and I thought it needed a tie-in sentence before it got there. Okay. Uh, and the the tie-in sentence is that, however. So, I deleted the lead, added the however, and then it, and then I think that that however sentence. Uh, tease up the uh, the human in the loop.
if that's fair. Yes. Looks good. And Elizabeth made some modifications to how diverse is the community of contributors working on the project. <clears throat> and Elizabeth had a question about whether we meant diversity of organization or diversity. And I think we mean diversity, diversity. I think, yeah, it's both. It, yeah. I mean, organizational diversity, open source will always be happy to discuss that as diversity. But I think we are clear that diversity is diversity, what I call diversity, diversity. <laughs> Not the organizational diversity, diversity dodge. <laughs> oh, are you talking about number five? Uh, yes, I am. Yeah, that yeah, that one's that one's DEI definitely. Uh, I think we should take some time and link out to some of the metrics that have uh, been defined in other places. So number five is demographic diversity, right? Is that a? I think, I think so. Yeah. That should be a. That should be a metric. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. Maybe take it, a peek at. Uh, I think they did make. I, I facilitated that meeting a bit recently, and I think we do have a, a metric for that. Uh, demographic. Uh, demographic data, uh, gender identity, race and ethnicity. In the last meeting, we refined that list in the spreadsheet for diversity, mm -hmm. equity, and inclusion to include, basically, we move some stuff around so that demographic information, for example, isn't divided between event and project. It's something you can measure, and where you measure it can be the event and project, but it's one metric. Yay. <clears throat> I, I think I had mentioned something about that uh, a couple months back. Somebody heard you. Oh. Not going to say who, but his name might be Match German Prey. Ah. Or as I call him, Brian. You guys know the story, right? Like the first two years Matt and I worked together, I kept calling him Brian. Did not. There was a reason for that. I mean, but, but it's not important. He does uh, so, kind of look like a Brian. I mean, I'm not going to lie. So. Well, I met him when we met it. We were working a lot with this guy named Brian Butler at Maryland. And I don't know why I just like. Well, Brian, Brian Butler, that's a, so that's a, uh, uh, he's a, he's a pretty well-respected guy, right? So, uh, yeah, he is, he is. So it was a compliment you were calling him Brian. So. I thought so. But... So it, rather than linking to a specific metric for number five, I'm linking to the demographic, uh, the page for the uh, demographic data. Demographic that is data focus area. Oh, that's a focus area. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. And uh, how diverse is the? You know what? Actually, let's just I'm just going to make that whole thing a link. Okay. Uh, ratio of volunteer work, sponsored work, and blended work. That sounds like a common metric. It's a contributor metric. Say that again. Is it a contributor metric? Which which number are you on? Kevin number six is okay. number six a common metric? No. That, that feels like something that may exist. We, we don't have any metrics that require the gathering of additional information and i do think that is one really critically different thing about this metric than everything else that we've done is that it's actually got somebody making a judgment about what is a contribution and letting people claim credit for contributions they make that are not captured in issue trackers or commit trackers or pull request merge request trackers 
are you, are you speaking? Uh... So for number six, the ratio of volunteer work, there isn't another metric because we've never done anything to parsimoniously tease out what, especially what organizations get credit. I mean, we do this implicitly by ostensibly knowing what organization a person is working for, but we don't really know. I feel like that should be a a common metric. So uh, I feel like it's uh, related feel related to organizational diversity, uh, whatever focus area that is in common. So here's what I would say to that. In my mind, I think it is this metric. <laughs> um, and that's because you need this metric implemented the way that we've set it up in order to uh -huh. gather that information. Like this metric has, is kind of coupled with the tool that you need to do something to determine or identify when you're doing something on behalf of a company or not. And when you're doing something on behalf of a client or not. And then there's a, another person in the loop who determines whether you get credit or not. Okay. Um, uh, I, I think that's fair. Okay. And I'm going to move it from six up to number two. All right. Because I feel like that's the. Uh, it's a two seed now. It's got home court to the championships. I guess I would also add that. Um, that there would be certain kinds of communities for which these data would not be all that useful. Um, sometimes if there's basically like just a, just a small number of people contributing that are all doing it on their work time. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if that disqualifies something as common, but I guess in a way this is more relevant for evolving open source communities. I mean, that you can, disagree with that, but that is kind of my take on this, that it might be less relevant for some types of projects. Oh, for sure. Like basically not active projects or fairly stable projects that don't have a lot of contributors. Yeah, this, I would agree that the overhead associated with granting this attribution is only going to ever as a practical matter happen on a project that has enough girth behind it. So I, I want to throw one other sort of small, not wrinkle, but we, we did add a new thing uh, last week. Um, I just pasted the link in the chat and it, it may or may not be relevant, but I, th I, think, I think it is. And that is we've added the concept of a contributor and a contributor role. Um, actually, did I paste in the right link? I have this, is this uh, it? Yeah, that's it. So in other words, now, um, users can, they can have like specific roles that may not even factor that may not even be connected to issues. So like, for example, a board member or something like that, like people can have these roles, but it's, <laughs> this is going to make our data analysis even more complex because we can start to look not just at somebody's organization and their they were doing work on client or volunteer, but that in the context of also like the role that they view themselves as. Yeah, or the role they have. Like we have board members, we have um, working group coordinators or whatever. I don't know what right. we decided to call them. <laughs> right. So I don't know if this, I don't know if we want to, I haven't even fully sort of grasped the significance of this to our, this particular, the significance of this change with the community roles to this particular metric, but I just wanted to mention it at least. It gives you another perspective on how to attribute contributions. So I know, for example, if a person's doing a lot of volunteer work, but they're the chair of the, the board of directors that maybe they're just trying to set a good example. Like there's another motivational component other than their good hearted volunteering, which I'm sure is how they got to be chair of the board. But um. uh, I recall there's a paper uh, in the CSCW on this, like what roles uh, an open source contributor choose to have yeah. while contributing. Yeah. There is a reference to that. 
my HVAC is on a motion sensor. Occasionally I have to get up and wave so that it turns on. I, with the sun in the east, I could just feel it cooking me when the air conditioner turns off. I mean, part of me is, is, is viewing that this would be slightly different from this particular mm -hmm. metric because the metric is almost like it's doing things on an issue by issue level and in using data that are specific to that issue. In other words, sometimes they're volunteer, sometimes they're sponsored. And whereas to me, the, the roles is like, something that can exist for a, a period of time across issues. So I, I just, I don't know. I saw this. Uh, so, so the question is, are we focused on the issue? But what I feel is we were focused on the entirety of the project, like who are the contributors, the uh, organization, individuals, be any role, whether they make an issue or come in, are they just on the board of director as a contributor? Right. Well, the way that might weigh in then is just that they have, they weigh, they have, when they, when they recognize contributions, they can now use this contributor role as a way that factors into rankings and leaderboards and things like that. So if an organization has multiple people on the board of the Drupal association or something that might change their, I don't know, cause it's all the, the actual algorithm is not totally, um, well, it's not settled, but those types of things weigh into like the marketplace page for the Drupal community. But again, I, I just feel like this is a bit of a wrench at this point, but no. So what I did with it is I just under filters, I put role at a contributor play. I just got, I just added details under type of contributor. There's essentially three categories, volunteer sponsored by a firm and or client and uh, a role that a contributor plays on a project. So these are the three, I think these are the three dimensions of attribution for entities beyond the person mm -hmm. for the person's effort that I've heard discussed. So I think it's just another bullet point. Sounds good. Do, 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 type of contribution. That's you hear wrench, I hear machine learning pipeline. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that is definitely something that I it's that I just, would be interested again. It's just it's another like, feature. Here's some more data to feed to the mm -hmm. To the algorithm. I think we are uh, volunteer versus sponsor labor investment. I that? added that. Oh, it's gotcha. um, basically how much a company is paying. But I don't. I know it doesn't fit exactly. Um, but it does touch on some of those things like internal versus external com contributions. Um, our hourly rate, like who's getting paid for the work. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, we can leave it out. Um, it's probably a I mix of that sure. one and organizational diversity together. Yeah. Uh, yeah maybe. I missed I missed that metric when I was looking for related metrics. So thank you for seeing that. Volunteer versus sponsor. Oh, you spent the whole meeting on this metric, but I don't care. I think it's important to get these metrics done sometimes. <laughs> do the do the visualizations we have are they ill-tempered no do they provide enough uh kind of a description they... of what this is do we need to add more i th i think those are actually I mean, captions, I'm, I'm a big caption mm -hmm. uh, person. Obviously um, the bit that we're, the bit that this... we're missing is individual attribution, which we, 
any visualizations we have, would, we'd have to kind of redact and remove names from. So I think the, uh, the, maybe we need to make a statement about um, the, the primary use of this information is summary data visualizations like this. Obviously we have the identifiable information for each person, but that isn't the intent of the metric. The intent of the metric is to try to understand at the community level where the work is being motivated. It's not to investigate or in, inquire uh, about particular individuals. Uh, but but isn't it also isn't it also a little bit of gamification? So aren't we aren't aren't we trying to give attribution to contributors so that you can kind of create uh, leaderboards and, and badging that uh, you know that that encourage participation? Isn't that part of isn't that a isn't that a big part of uh, attribution? I, I think if I heard if I was listening carefully through all of the wonderful information Matthew shared with us. I think I heard that organizations really took a shine to being given credit for the work that their people do. That it didn't start that way, but one of one of the impacts is that the organizations are getting some credit and getting on leaderboards and that has some marketing value for them. And so there is a, a motivation that's set up by that, by the organizational attribution. I think I was saying hell yes, but <laughs> the I, I will say like the Drupal community has mm -hmm. the Drupal association has a, has a specific stance that they do not rank individual contributions to the project. I think um, that's important. Others, other, it's certainly a use of that. And Dries, Dries and I added it to our posts mm -hmm. over the years. Um, so it, it's certainly possible that people can do that. You're, I mean, you're absolutely right, Kevin. That's that, that is a, that's one of those things that people can do with this for sure. And I don't know if the chaos community and a metric like this takes any sort of stance, but um, like encouraging people not to use this that way or, or, or suggesting like that, that those types of things can have negative consequences is, is a, is a potential thing that, that we could mention. For the most part, when it comes to gamification, I think, uh, I think chaos kind of takes an ag agnostic stance, right? So the gamification can be good, but gamification can also be bad. Uh, but there, there's there's a reason people people create leaderboards. It's it's because they they often they often accomplish a task, and people do very much want to be uh, credited with, with the things that they do. So, uh, but I, I agree with you completely. It's a it's a double edged sword. Right, uh, it's gamification of these things can be can be good, but it, it can also be very bad. And uh, and then there, there's also that that other understanding of gamification where the metrics are used in ways that they were not necessarily uh, supposed to be used for. Right, you can uh, yeah. you can manipulate them, uh, or try to make them show different things. I, I mean, I'll just, as a side note, I've been looking into this specific issue for the last few weeks and reading the research about this in different areas, different communities and what the effect has had. And th there does seem to be some consensus about the problematic nature of those, but there are, there are definitely specific instances where that, that, that is, it is beneficial, beneficial to certain people. I've also just seen firsthand the negative consequences that publishing those leaderboards has had for on individuals. And um, I, I, I can mention that here. I'm not saying we need to take any sort of stance on that, but I just, it's something I've been thinking about as well because it's so tied to this particular. Metric. Yeah, I, I think um, probably our metrics need to begin to incorporate some kind of heading like data ethics considerations. I, I think that as we, gotten a fair number of like over we have 57 published metrics right now and we'll probably be in the neighborhood of 70 to 80 by the end of the summer um i think we want to have we want to start thinking about how our data is going to be used or how the data from these metrics can be used so i, I put a paragraph in there for data ethics considerations uh, <clears throat> a question just a, a side note like adding a separate thing is it going to 
create an issue on the automation of the metric release because we have a standard template and in other templates we don't have the data entry consideration section. No, I'm breaking uh, everything. Third, can... third headers are optional. Third level headers are all optional. So okay. se second, second level headers are are built into the template. So every every metric should include the second level headers. Uh, but third level headers are optional, so we can we can add those as we uh, see fit. Okay. We probably don't need the word optional, and then after our yeah, we should template. be we should be deleting that. Yeah, that's part of the. Uh, yeah, I just I think I went through and deleted them all. We're okay. at time right now. Um, does anyone want to take it to do to actually do the pull request on this? Because I think we're ready to go. Short of the data ethics yeah. considerations. I'm I'm totally willing to do that. Awesome. I mean, basically, uh, Kevin, what's the process? There, Matthew, do you know the process? Uh, no. Kevin, is it a pull request or? Yeah, just uh, so put the put the pull request in. So turn this in into a uh, markdown file and put the pull request into evolution. And the uh, we're putting it into which focus area? Yeah, that was my question. Um, let me go back and look if we, I'm sure we have it in a focus area on the spreadsheet, whether or not that's where it stays, roll the dice. What happened here? That isn't where I thought that was going to take me. Oh, metrics tracking sheets. Okay. So is it WG slash evolution is the right working group? WD dash yeah. evolution. Okay. Yeah. So I was just looking for like um, past examples of this in the pull request history. Is there is is there one maybe you could just point me to and I can use that as kind of a template or is this documented somewhere? Uh, you mean uh, you mean Avoid a contribution for, credit for, for, for the markdown? Of what, like a, a pull request, like are there key parts of the pull request headers or things like that? Or is it just simply like add this metric? Uh, there is a governance document which tells how to uh, submit a metric or release a metric. Okay. okay essentially, yeah, it's under the community growth. Yeah. Um, so there'll be a folder called community growth in the evolution repository. Um, Uh, hold on a second. Let me, I'm going to give you a, here you go. This is the pull request that, uh, Elizabeth put in, in diversity and inclusion. This was the last release. Okay. Leave it was that in uh, chat somewhere. Is the, yep. I just dropped it into chat. So this was the create documentation discoverability. Okay. Uh, and notice at the top of this metric there is a little disclaimer which we actually need to add to ours as well oh this metric is a release candidate to comment okay yeah. so so this metric is a release candidate to comment on this metric please see issue number Uh, and I will go ahead and create the issue right now. Contribution attribution. Copy. So here is the link for the metric release. Which is on the government governance document. Thank you. Okay. Okay, I should have plenty here. I just uh it's under community growth folder is where you'd put it, and it's just a, basically a new markdown file. You just basically copy and paste this and put the images in some kind of referential location. I think we usually use an images folder. Yeah. 
I mean, I do. I think that now we're to this point. I, I was going to also just ask Dries if he wants to review it or maybe comment on any of these since he's. Yeah, been... I mean, you can invite. Yeah, that'd be a great idea. Yeah. So I thought if I did it, then I can just point him to it and get his. Awesome. Name. All right. Well, I'm going to conclude this lovely meeting. Thank you, Matthew, for taking this due item. And um, we have a metric. Yeah. By, by the way, the, the naming convention is uh, all lowercase contribution dash attribution. Uh, okay. And you can find it in the uh, uh, issue that I am creating for this metric. If you yes. need to know what the, the name of the... Uh, it is. All right. Yep. Okay. I'm stopping recording.